gathering with us. Uh, to those of you joining us online, we're so thankful that you're here with us and want, you, want to just encourage you to welcome one another in the comments section. Uh, we're so glad you chose to join us and to celebrate this great day in the life of our church. To all of you who are visiting, we're so thankful to have you and you might be here supporting one of our confirmands or those being baptized. And, and we will be celebrating baptism, and we'll be uh, doing that by immersion this today. And if you have not been baptized and you would like to be baptized today, you will, we'll call you up at the end of service to have that opportunity. So be thinking about that and maybe praying about that decision uh, through the service if you would like. But it's going to be a great day in which we gather. I'm Pastor Brady Johnston. This is Pastor April Failer, and we look forward to worshiping with you this day as we celebrate this moment in the life of our confirmands and as we lift high the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so let's stand and worship together. How are we doing this morning, church? Uh, we have a reason to worship, don't we? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. So lift high your voices. Uh, Jesus, we love you. We welcome you here. Your love is greater. Your 
friend. Amen. <laughs> Church, we're going to see, uh, or we're going to uh, uh, send our, our children over to uh, Godly Play. So if you guys could head right over to the front door, you'll see Miss Keeley over there. Head on over that way. Uh, we are going to uh, um, uh, to lift a prayer over them. Uh, so let's pray. Um, Jesus, oh, we love you. We love your faithfulness. Uh, Father, you are like the sun each and every day. Uh, Lord, we can trust that you are there. We can trust that you are doing what you say that you will do. Uh, so, Father, we give our kids uh, into your hands. Uh, Father, we ask that you would uh, just meet them where they're at. Um, have a wonderful, wonderful time of, uh, of worship and, and allow them to explore who you are, uh, which you love so, so very much. Uh, and God, continue to, uh, to bless us and our, uh, our worship. May we, um, oh, may we give you uh, the worship that you, you desire, Father. Oh, what a Savior, isn't he wonderful? Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. Lift it up, church. Bow down before him, for he is Lord. Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. Oh, what a Savior lifted up. Oh, what a Savior. Isn't he wonderful? Sing hallelujah, oh, Christ is risen. Bow down before him, for he is Lord of all. Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. Sing, are you hurt? Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling you. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling you. Sing, oh, come to the altar. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. So let go of all the past mistakes. Sing it out. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling you. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes a new life is born. Jesus is calling. Yeah. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was born with the precious blood. 
Oh, we sing what a Savior. Oh, what a Savior. Isn't he wonderful? Sing hallelujah. Christ is risen. Oh, lift your voice, church. Bow down before him, for he is Lord of all. Sing hallelujah, for Christ is risen. Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness. This is our great commission, church. So sing it out. Bear your cross as you wait for the crown. Tell the world of the treasure you found. Yes, Jesus. We worship your name, Father. We pray. Jesus, that you be glorified with every breath that we take, every thought that we think. So, Father, may you be lifted high in all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Church, you may be seated. Uh, well, today is one of those great days in the life of the church where we celebrate our confirmands and this amazing uh, process they've been through to discern their, their faith and their commitment to the Lord, which will be expressed in a number of ways today uh, that you'll be a part of. And so at this time, I want to invite our confirmands to come up, and we're going to join me on the small stage over here. And your families, if y'all would go ahead and line up against the wall over there uh, to be a part of, of our uh, praying over our confirmands. So. All right, I'm going to make a little bit of room for the pastor. All right, there you knock me out. I know it's your stage today, but uh, I appreciate a little bit of room. So today we have uh, our, our confirmands here. I want to introduce them to you. This is Andrew, Brooklyn, and Bo. Uh, and we have uh, one of them who's missing. You'll see the video uh, for Cooper Johnson. I actually won't see the video today, but uh, Cooper Johnson was sick today. So we're going to be missing Cooper uh, and hate for him to miss this day, but we're praying for him to get better. 
and, um, but we're going to be celebrating uh, these today. You know, confirmation is this amazing process where we as a church, we recognize, you know, that there's this important time of transition in our life where we go from, you know, kind of having the faith that our parents might have had and uh, to growing up as, as an adult and into an adult and beginning to wonder, is this something I believe uh, on my own? And, and so we recognize that there's a time that our students go through that. And so for confirmation, we simply try and take them under our arm and to help them understand the great tenets of our faith, of what it means to believe in Jesus and make that public profession of Christ as Lord and rejection of our sin and full acceptance of Christ. We've talked about baptism and the symbol of baptism of new life in Jesus Christ that that makes to all who are part of the church. And then also we've talked about membership in the church and what it means to be a part of the great work that God is doing through the church. And so we've talked about those things uh, and maybe decided to make that profession. And one of the ways we do that is through some just historic questions that have been asked for centuries upon centuries in the church. And these are the questions we've already talked about these, but I'm going to ask you these. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness Reject the evil powers of this world and repent of your sin. Do you accept the freedom and power that God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. Amen. Uh, you know, there's also an element of this as a church where we ask you as a church, do you, again, hold to your rejection of sin and your acceptance of Jesus Christ? Amen. That's a part of the witness here of Confirmation Sunday is not only this amazing moment in their life, but also the remembrance of who we are as a church in Jesus Christ. Uh, it's been a long practice for our church to anoint and bless our confirmands, and we're going to move to that in just a moment. So, uh, Bo and Andrew, if you want to join your families, I know Brooklyn, your family is going to join you up at the altar here. Um, but anointing is, is one of those things in which um, Scripture shows is a time of, of blessing um, and a symbol of the blessing of God upon another. And so we do the anointing here because it's a time as they make this amazing profession of faith in Christ that we recognize God's blessing uh, upon each of them. Brooklyn, we are all so proud of the young lady that you're becoming. Your love for Jesus shines through the kindness that you show to everyone that you come across every day. We pray that you continue to pursue your walk with Christ in every aspect of your life. We've been, you have been prayed over by so many even before you were born. The Lord has been so faithful in those prayers. One day you will know the scope of those prayers that were lifted up in the very beginnings of your life. Our prayer for you is to continue to lean into the Lord especially when you have those tough decisions to make in your life. You will always have us and your church family for support and never-ending love. Love you most. Brooklyn, I anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May God's blessing of his spirit and his presence be upon you. Let's pray. God, how grateful we are for your daughter, Brooklyn, of the love that you have for her that has claimed her in Jesus Christ and given her new life. We celebrate this life and pray that, Lord, you would carry her every day of her life to give her wisdom to fill her with strength and courage through your Holy Spirit, to serve you and love you and be faithful to you every day of her life. May she know the fullness of life, the life of grace built up 
and encouraged to be that follower of yours that you have in mind for her to be. We are so thankful for her and pray she finds her place in this church to give the gifts that you have given her to be used for the glory and the building of your great kingdom. We pray all of this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Dear Lord, Suzanne and I are thankful for your relationship with Andrew. We're so excited that you'll be walking with Andrew through his life. Andrew, your mother and I ask that you always turn to Jesus for his guidance in your life. In Jesus' name we pray. We love you, Andrew. Andrew, I anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May the blessing of God's presence and power be at work in you through the gift of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Andrew, we thank you so much for being a part of our church, and God, we are so grateful for the gift of Andrew's presence with us. We're so just blessed by this time of him publicly professing his faith, his trust upon you, his rejection of the things that are not of you and the acceptance of everything that's a part as a life of knowing you as Lord and Savior. And so we pray that, God, you would uphold Andrew every day of his life. May he be aware of the, the amazing resources of his new identity in you, of, his, of your power and authority that's at work within him. We pray that he knows every blessing of what it means to be your child, claimed in every way by your grace given a new resurrected life of glory. May you empower him to be the witness, Lord, that you have in mind for him to be. We are so grateful for him and blessed by his witness. Amen. Thank you, Father, for this church. Thank you for the people and the staff that have invested in Bo. Thank you for family members and grandparents that have modeled living, living by and uh, walking in faith. Bless this decision Bo's made this week in his profession. Our prayer is that he will use the gifts and talents that you've given him. Glorify your kingdom. Amen. you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May the blessing of God's spirit and presence rest upon you every day of your life. Bo, may you know the love of God. May his grace claim you in every way that you might be his through and through. You may know the joy of what it means to belong to him, to have the very life of Jesus Christ flowing through your veins. May the grace of God raise you up to grow into all of who God has in mind for you to be, that you may employ every gift that God has given you for the glory of God, both in his church and beyond. We know that God indeed has great plans for you, that those plans are not only for tomorrow, but they are for today. 
So may the spirit of discernment guide you in every decision you make. And as you seek to serve the Lord, both in the church and beyond. Lord, we love you so much and thank you for this amazing work you're doing in Bo's life. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, if you have your Bibles with you, I invite you to turn to Colossians chapter 2. We'll read those words in, in just a moment. Um, but what an amazing day to get to celebrate this work that God is doing in the lives of our confirmands. It's just such an incredible process to be a part of and such a blessing. You know, we ask them those historic questions as a show of, of their rejection of sin, of their confession of their faith in Jesus Christ. You know, here in a moment after the sermon, we'll be celebrating uh, their baptism or remembering their baptism. Um, it's either acknowledging God's claim upon their life for the first time publicly, or, or it's just a, a remembering that they are claimed already by the grace of God. And so uh, it's going to be an amazing thing to celebrate with them here in a moment. Um, but we're, we're not only celebrating our confirmands, uh, but today we're celebrating Pentecost. Today is Pentecost Sunday, which is for us a celebration of the birth of the church, of what God is doing in you and me. For those of you who are members who are here or, or in the church far beyond, we celebrate this amazing thing that the Lord is doing through the church. And the story of Pentecost is found in Acts chapter 2, when the body of believers, of Jesus' followers who are left after the resurrection, go to Jerusalem to wait with anticipation to the gift that Jesus said will come upon them as they go to Jerusalem. We're told in Acts 2 that they're there worshiping when all of a sudden the Spirit flows through and fills the room in which they're gathering in each of the believers who were there. And there's a dramatic display of the new gifts and presence of the Holy Spirit. And so everybody comes from all around to look and see this, this spectacle that's kind of happening. And that's when Peter, the apostle, stands up and he preaches the good news of Jesus Christ. And thousands upon thousands of people come to faith in Jesus and in that moment, the church was born. And we, so we come here today to remember what happened so long ago, but to know that that work is ongoing through this church that exists here today through you and me and the churches all over the world. And the reason that we recognize our confirmands and we, we merge confirmation with Pentecost is because we recognize the new life that came to the church there on that day at Pentecost. But as we think of the confirmands and what the Holy Spirit is doing in them, of the new life that comes from their public profession of faith in Jesus Christ, of, of baptism and their initiation in the church, we, we know that there's also a symbol of new life coming into the church, which we know the Lord is doing um, all uh, still to this day. And so it's just an exciting time for us. Uh, our, our confirmation class, every year we encourage them to come up with a Bible verse that kind of speaks to their experience and what we feel, they feel like the Lord is doing in them. And, and the verse they chose today, this, this year, is Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. And I'll just say to them, they did a great job picking a passage uh, that speaks to this experience and what the Lord is doing in their lives. So let's listen to this passage. So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in him. Rooted and built up in him. Strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. You know, to really understand what the Apostle Paul is saying here, we, we kind of have to back up and look at the reason he wrote this letter in the first place. Uh, the Apostle Paul got wind of some heresies that had kind of arisen, some kind of false ideas 
that had emerged out of the churches in and around Colossae. And so Paul felt the need to write into that. And and Paul's concern was that the churches had begun to kind of look for some beliefs in Jesus that were apart from the witness that the apostles had given them about who Jesus is and what he has done. And, And we see this happen often in some of the early churches, and this even happens in the church today, that there are beliefs about Jesus that people tend to run to that might go against Jesus as revealed in the word. There seems to be this propensity to kind of look beyond Jesus as we know him in the word to find perhaps some other to complete kind of the picture of salvation and what it means to have fullness of life in Christ. And so Paul's disturbed by these heresies, these kind of false ideas. And so what Paul does is he writes a letter and Paul's point into these heresies that are essentially saying diminishing the role of Jesus and lifting up the role of humanity in salvation. Paul says, look, there is no need for anything other than Jesus for salvation. And one of the words for our confirmands and for the church today is is that word that Jesus is sufficient for salvation. That there's need for for nothing else but the grace and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ upon us. That we are saved by the faith we have because of the grace that God has shown us in Jesus Christ. And this is one of the points that Paul brings home here in Colossians chapter 2, in speaking to the sufficiency of Jesus. You know, Paul says there's no need to run to anything other or find something in addition to Jesus. The need for the believer who wants fullness of life is found when we walk in him. Not when we seek things apart from him or outside of him, but instead when we seek life in him. That's when we know the abundance of life in Jesus Christ. You know, Paul kind of further defines what it means to have a a life in Christ in Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 when he says these words. He says, "I have been crucified with Christ. And it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. You see, when Paul thinks of a life in Jesus Christ, Paul says, look, the life I had before Christ, I I let go of and I renounce because I want to be taken up into a new life where Jesus lives in me and lives through me. And this is the vision that Paul has for us. And confirmands, as you come up to make these claims of Jesus Christ as your Savior, this is what you're saying. In baptism, in the movement of baptism, of going down is a symbol of of death, of letting go of the old life apart from Christ and being raised like a resurrection to a new life with Jesus. A life where Jesus begins to live in you and through you. And as Paul begins to hold this out for us, what Paul is going to say is this is what it means to live in Christ is to live a Christ-centered and Christ-empowered life. That's what a life in Christ is. It's a Christ-centered, Christ-empowered life. And to speak to this, he he gives us really two images we're going to kind of sit with today before we move to the baptism. There's two images that speak to this Christ-centered, Christ-empowered life. And the first one is that Paul says it is a life that is rooted in Jesus Christ. A life that is rooted in Jesus Christ. Christ. Speaking of a a Christ-centered life, he begins with a foundation, which is a a fitting thing no matter what you're building. He speaks to the need, using the imagery of a tree, to send roots down deep. 
that for the life of faith in Jesus Christ, it is to be anchored in Christ himself. In the same way that trees send their roots down for nourishment and stability, so we who profess faith sink our roots into the person and the work of Jesus Christ. And we hold on to him for stability in our faith. We sink our roots into Christ because we know it's the nourishment of Jesus' own life flowing into ours that begins to fill us with the abundance of life that's available to every child of God. What's powerful about this image that we have of being rooted in Christ, you know, confirmands, uh, is that there's, a, this, there's an individual element to this. That for every one of us to be rooted in Christ is a decision to believe in Jesus. To say, I want a life in you and to reach by faith into Christ. We know this is an individual thing that we have to choose and make that decision for ourselves, which you have done publicly. But what's also beautiful about this image is that there's also a communal element to it as well. You know, part of being rooted in Christ is what the church does and is something that God does in the church as we gather together as the body of Christ. I remember seeing a great example of this in, in Peter uh, Wallabine's book, uh, The Life of Trees. And he talks very early on in the book about a, a study that was done on a forest in Germany. And he said the belief kind of moving into this study was that each tree was kind of independent of the others. In fact, each tree was kind of in competition with the other tree for vital resources of life and well-being. And so each tree was kind of fighting and warring against the others. But what they said when they began to study deeper and deeper was that as the roots of the trees reached further and further into the soil, even hitting the roots of other trees, they didn't fight against each other for resources. Instead, they linked together and began to help one another. And they began to supply resources, sometimes even upholding the weaker trees. And they did this because a tree didn't exist for itself, it existed for the whole. That every tree needed to be healthy for the, there to be a forest to provide a canopy for, for life and for thriving of the trees and community. And one of the points that they looked at was they said, you know, for a forest to exist... If a forest exists and thrives, it has the power to change the climate around it. And I think one of the reasons that we seek to be rooted in Christ as a church is because we want to see the Lord work in the church so as to change the climate around it. That as you and I sink our roots deeper into life in Christ, as we gather in public witness to say that Jesus is Lord and to seek to serve the community around as has been evidenced to us in the death and the resurrection, the sacrifice and the giving of Christ. That's when the Lord can work in the church and change the climate of Midlothian and beyond. And so that's our prayer. It's why we sink our roots deeper and deeper into Christ. Now, the other image the Apostle Paul gives us here about living a Christ-centered life is he says not only are we rooted, built on a foundation of faith in Jesus Christ, but we seek to be built up. At the foundation, a stable foundation in faith in Jesus Christ, we seek to be built up into him. And the language that he uses here speaks to the building process in the ancient world, which is probably more reflected on, on what we see in kind of third world countries than it is in the way we tend to build things. But it's this idea of building layer upon layer, kind of one brick at a time. And this is an incredible image for the work of God's grace in the believer. The ongoing work that we call sanctifying grace. 
Because we know when we profess faith in Jesus that there's a grace that's given to us, a grace that leads to salvation and new life we call justifying grace. But the glorious grace that we get to live into beyond that decision is a grace that grows us up into something beautiful. Into what Paul will call in Ephesians 2.10, the masterpiece that God has in mind for every one of us to become in Jesus Christ. Paul says we are built up brick upon brick by the grace of God. I remember on a mission trip, we traveled to Belize, and we were working on a school there, a rather uh, extensive school system. It was two stories, and uh, I went there about, uh, I went there in, in the spring, um, and we started kind of laying those first really few layers of cinder blocks, uh, one upon the other on this rather extensive slab um, out in the middle of this field. And so we began for a whole week, we're just laying cinder block on cinder block, and when you're building a, a building that's even bigger than this one and you only have a few days, you don't see a whole lot of return for your work. But when we came back 12 months later, it was amazing to see that first floor being built and completed as they began to work on the second story. And this is kind of what Paul has in mind as he thinks about the grace of God that will continue to be at work in every one of our lives as we seek Jesus and live in relationship to him. That the Spirit will work in us to build us up into what Christ is calling us to be. And brick by brick, as we seek Jesus, as we dig into the Word, as we pursue Him in prayer, as we gather as the church for witness and encouragement, brick by brick, the Lord will build onto our character until we become a reflection of Christ. And what's powerful about these two images that Paul holds in front of us is that both of these verbs of being rooted and built are actually in the present tense in the Greek language. And the present tense uh, implies a completed action with actually a continuing effect. And otherwise, it's something that's happened to you, but it also continues to happen. It's still happening to this day. And this is a great word for those of us who have maybe long ago made a profession of faith or, or were baptized. But the grace of God that worked in us that day continues to work on us today to enable us and empower us to become what Christ has called us to be. For our confirmands on this day, it reminds us that the grace you experience today is not only the gift for today, but will continue to follow you every day of your life as we continue to pursue Jesus Christ. And so as we move on to this next moment in our life as a church and celebrate the baptism of our confirmands, the remembering of their baptism. We recognize the gift of grace that God continues to supply all of us as we seek to be rooted and built up into a glorious life and relationship with Christ. I'm going to invite our confirmands to come up and, and their families can also kind of gather over here uh, against the wall. As we get ready for baptism. We recognize the symbol and the power of baptism, the means of grace that baptism is, as, we, as it symbolizes the power and the presence of God at work in us to bring us new life. And we recognize that throughout Scripture, water has been for us a significant image of deliverance. There's some of the most powerful stories in Scripture about God working through in his people. Often they were delivered through water, through the Red Sea and over the Jordan River into the Promised Land. And so it is by these waters we recognize that Jesus takes us from the threshold of death, of a life apart from him, into a new life, a resurrect, resurrected life of glory with him. 
And we have a, a gift here for our confirmands. Uh, and one of those is that we have water from the Jordan River um, here that we'll be pouring into this as a symbol of just that connection to Christ and the, the beauty of being baptized um, in some of the same waters that Jesus himself recognized. Would you join me in prayer? Lord, for our confirmands who are coming to be baptized or whether they're coming to remember your claim upon them, we just pray a blessing over these waters and over them who make these decisions. May this moment be one in which they sense the power of your spirit at work in them that gives them the grace and the authority to live into the fullness of life, Jesus, that you have given them. We thank you so much for this gift and pray they experience your power and your glory at work. Amen. Amen. Brooklyn, you're welcome. Brooklyn Nicole Berg, I baptize thee in the name of the, or I remember your baptism in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. to that. Amen to that. Uh, all right, Andrew, you're next. All right. Andrew David Bishop, may you remember your baptism in the Lord's claim upon you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Y'all growing big in the Wendell household. So it's a, uh, the Bo's being baptized. So we, ce we celebrate this amazing moment in your life. So Bo and Major Wendell, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So we have a, a really important moment here as well. Um, this is a time, if, if any of you are, are interested, you've never been baptized, or you want to remember your baptism and get wet today, uh, then you're welcome to come up and join us over here. We have uh, several people who are stepping forward today. Zach and Zoe and Steve and Davidson are going to be baptized today. And so this is an amazing moment. And since we've already asked our confirmation, our confirmands, uh, these important questions, we're going to ask the three of y'all and anyone else who might want to join us uh, these important questions. So why don't y'all come up y'all share this here? All right. All right. So we're going to ask y'all some of the same questions that we asked before. 
Um, and we know, Zach and Zoe, y'all are seven years old, and you're making this decision um, to show your love for Jesus, and we're so excited for that. And, and part of what we do when we have our young people who make these decisions, and, and this really applies to all of us, but we as a church recognize that we have a responsibility to raise our young people up to know what it means to follow Jesus. Uh, we're here, and that means teaching Sunday school. It means getting to know their name and loving and supporting them. It means saying hi to them when they're at worship and uh, maybe being a part of one of their godly play leaders. But in doing this as a church, we pledge to help raise them up to know what it means to follow Jesus and to live that life in Christ. And so as we hear these words, we also affirm with them as they make these decisions um, our responsibility to be the church and show them what it means to be the church. And so I'm going to ask you kind of a, a smaller version of the questions that I ask, and that's for all of us here. Um, do you come here to repent of your sin? And, and what that means, Zach and Zoe, is it means you leave everything that's not of Jesus. And you come here to profess Jesus as your Savior, to show your love for Jesus and all that he's done for you. Amen. All right. Zoe, we'll have you come in here first, okay? Zoe Brienne Valverde, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. <laughs> Here we go. Oh. Amen. <laughs> you did good. You did good. Come on, Mama. You did good. Mm -hmm. All right, Mr. Zach. Zach Eugene Valverde, I baptize thee in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. A little bit bigger than Zach and Zoe here, so it's a, uh, you know, Stephen Davidson comes here to be uh, to be baptized, and so we celebrate the work of God in your life and this profession of faith and this amazing moment that symbolizes you're being raised to a new life in Jesus Christ. And so Stephen, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I think it's safe to turn this one on now. All right. Uh, what an amazing day to celebrate this, this God who's alive and working uh, in our confirmands and those being baptized. We're so excited. Uh, I just want to pray a prayer together, and then we'll, we'll, we'll have a song. But let's, let's, let's pray together as a church. Uh, God, how exciting it is to, to be a part of this work, to be reminded, Jesus, that you are still moving hearts and changing lives today. We know the Holy Spirit is at work and that the grace of God is growing in, in the believers here in the church. And we just pray you continue, Lord, to help us be rooted in a life with you and being built up into something beautiful for you. We pray for all those who are, are baptized today or remembering their claim, your claim upon their lives. We pray, God, that you would help to strengthen their faith. We pray that they would continue to grow in your grace every day to know what it means to love you fully with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength and to learn to love your neighbor as yourself. We pray, Jesus, you empower this kind of living that they may know the fullness of life in you and display that to display that for all the world to see that you may win glory 
and this world. We pray this in your name. Amen. Church, let's stand. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day it has been. Uh, let's lift up our praises. Uh, just as our, uh, our confirmands and uh, folks who have been baptized uh, here have, have prof professed uh, this, that they have decided to follow Jesus, so we too will lift that up. Amen? Amen. Let's sing. Decided, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. Turning back, sing though none go with me, though none go with me, I still will follow. Though none go with me, I still will follow. Though none go with me, I still will. turning back no turning back oh we lift up our everything to him so would you sing this out everything all I Let it be your declaration. I will give to you my everything. All I am and all I have to bring. I will give to you my everything. All I
just your voices and I will follow my heart surrender my Jesus I am yours oh we profess it Lord and I will follow my life in your hands my Jesus I am yours cause I have decided to follow Jesus yes I have decided to follow Jesus I have decided to follow Jesus no turning back no turning back Amen indeed Amen indeed uh, I want to thank you for being here to celebrate our, our confirmands and just this amazing day um, Pentecost if you're visiting with us we're so glad uh, you chose to join us today for this amazing day. Uh, we know our worship continues far beyond these walls, and one of the ways that we continue our worship, uh, and by being the church, is by offering our gifts. And there's an opportunity uh, now for those of you online to follow a link in the comments section. We also have the QR code uh, you can follow to make a gift, or there's places you can give as you, you exit uh, the place. But we know that empowers us to do the mission and the work that Jesus has given us to make disciples uh, for him and for the kingdom. And so we thank you for your generosity. Just a quick update on our parsonages. We are selling both of the parsonages to pay off debt. Uh, we, are, we have a contract we're executing on the Meadowcrest Parsonage. Um, the Hillcrest one has been delayed by the monsoons. Uh, so we're still lacking about a, a coat of paint on the outside. So if you have time early in the week to come paint a little bit, uh, please come. We'd love uh, for you to help so we can get that on the market as soon as possible. Uh, we have coming up next week is a big day for us. We'll be bringing Sunday school back. At least it'll be open uh, for our adult classes. And so you're welcome to begin um, meeting again. We also will be, um, next Sunday, we'll be shifting our COVID precautions or the language around our COVID precautions. So we have uh, been requiring social distancing and masks. And the day after we kind of announced our plan to do that June 20th, they, uh, CDC and the school kind of changed uh, their, their um, perspective on it. And so um, knowing that like in our conversational leadership, uh, a lot of our church has been vaccinated, numbers are going down, we're feeling good about everything. Um, and so beginning next Sunday, we're gonna go from requiring social distancing and masks to just encouraging them. So if you feel comfortable and safe for you, uh, you're not required to wear a mask. Um, if you feel like it's the best decision for your family, you're welcome to do it. We wanna create an environment um, we have to create an environment that's different than the world around us. I mean, that's just, that's just the bottom line around anything, especially in the season of COVID when it's so easy to be divided between our beliefs on these things. But I want to create a community of love and respect where we edify and build each other up. And so um, give each other room and space as we, we practice this. But um, that'll begin next Sunday, just that, that shift in the language to encouraging these practices, not requiring them. Um, so be aware of that uh, next Sunday. Uh, also today, um, well, I begin a sabbatical tomorrow, so um, I'll be gone for a lot of the summer. Um, are y'all glad I'm leaving? Like, I don't know what it is. I don't know how to take that excitement, so it's like nine weeks of partying when the pastor is not here. So um, I've left competent people in charge, all right, so thank you for the staff and, and you as a church for your support and that time away to get renewed and, and just uh, as a vision for the church. I uh, appreciate that time, and we look forward, God, we're going to miss y'all, but we'll look forward to seeing you into July. Uh, last thing is just visitors, we're so glad you're here. If it's your first time with us, we have some t-shirts for you. So uh, they're great t-shirts, and we just want to say we love you. Thank you for coming. And so you can, Keely's going to wave her hand, and there's just teasing. Um, I don't, maybe those shirts aren't out just yet. So, uh, but anyways, you can go there. We'll make sure you get you a shirt. We love you. Thank you so much for being here. And I pray as we leave that, that man, we would just leave knowing that um, the Lord is at work, that we would be rooted and built up in a life in Jesus Christ to be a witness to the world around us. May we do all this for the glory of God. Amen.